Want more of this? All you gotta do is this. Hit the subscribe button, like, and add notifications for Wine & Culture LA's YouTube channel. Y'all niggas got me hot. Welcome back, everybody. This is Wine and Culture LA season two. I'm your host, Somalia Dev. We're back at the gorgeous cell of Beverly Hills, and I got the legend, the icon, Cedric Entertainer here. What's happening, Dirty? Dirt, what's up? Good to see you, St. man. St. Louis, want they cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Yes, I'm sir. honored. Appreciate you, man. Comedic legend, entertainment icon, is somebody who gives back and honors those that came before him. That's who said it is. He's also owner of the wine brand Seta, named after his mother Rosetta, and today we get to taste this. So we have a 2019 Seta Napa Valley Red Blend. You ready, big dog? Let's go. Let's do it. So your mother Rosetta used to yeah. say, we toast our glass with, with a touch, touch of class. class. Yeah. Uh, looking back, was she truly the one that kind of kickstarted your love of wine into what it is today? Yeah, you know, I would say so. I think that, you know, my mom was not much of a drinker, but yeah. you know, that was her thing. She would have a glass of wine, uh, you know, after work, she was a school teacher for over 30 years right. and she would drink a little glass of wine and have a good time. And so uh, it became the thing that I, I kind of um, associated with relaxation. Right, of right. course, doing something sophisticated. You go out to dinner, you have a nice meal, you get your glass of wine, glass. Yeah. you know, and, and, I, and I know she wasn't like super sophisticated. She always had the little Rhea Needy on ice <laughs> on a can of wine, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but, but very, but very sweet. You know, she was an elegant yeah, woman with, yeah. you know, with a, with a nice kind of elegant flow about herself. Yeah, so yeah. it's in the imagery of having wine, um, you know, kind of brought about that that degree of sophistication. So it was For definitely sure. my introduction to For it. For sure, man. That's that's beautiful. And honestly, everything about Seta, everything about the brand is beautiful. So congrats. Uh, so I brought you here to our showroom. And here on yeah. our showroom table, I got some of your favorite wine styles. This is from my lovely friends at wineconsigners.com. Yeah. So I got your Barolos here, yeah. Sauvignon Blancs there, and I got your Cali Red. So I got some very special wines next to some affordable, uh, approachable wines we'll talk about. So kicking off right here in Barolo, uh, the first one I got to show you, that's a 1955 Giacomo Conterno Barolo. Yes. Um, that's actually the oldest wine we've ever had on the show, okay. literally. That's what Barolo is all about, a long lived wine that can age forever. 67 year old wine that we can open today Beautiful. and it still has great characteristics. Yes. For anybody that likes Barolo, right next to it is a much more approachable version. So that's a 2018 GD Vira Albi Barolo. That's about 40 bucks. Okay. Highly rated. That's big, bold, juicy, and it's versatile. You can crack it open tonight, decant it with somebody special, drink it, or you can hold on to that for a few years and uh, it'll still be amazing. Good. Barolos age very, very well. Yes. So those are Barolos. Sauvignon Blancs. You like you some Sauvignon Blanc, right? Yeah, yeah. I like a little crispy, you the know, crisp. like crisp, crisp wine, a little fruit forward. So for sure. That's a 2011 Spotswood Sonoma Napa nice. Sauvignon yes. Blanc. Uh huh. Yeah. So, uh, Sauvignon Blancs really don't age that long in general, yeah, exactly. but that is. Is a uh, winery and a wine that can age. Like I said, same thing with the Barolo. We can open it today and be kind of surprised of you know how many good characteristics it still has. Um, right next to it, I'm not sure if you heard of La Fette Rosé, but Ooh. if you have not, right next to it is a happy medium between Sauvignon Blanc and between like a young white Burgundy. So that's a winery that I support heavily. That's a 2021 La Fette Du Blanc from Saint Tropez. Uh, La Fette Rosé. They have the rosé. If you haven't heard of it before, you will, because Chris Paul just invested in it. Okay. So they they come in with it and they come in hot and heavy. Um, that's go to every day drinking twenty five dollars. I'm good friends with the ownership, and I always just got like a bottle of La Fette with me. So I definitely recommend that one. We'll have to, I'll get you a bottle of that. Yeah, uh, at the end, definitely, man. for sure. And then. Last 
last but not least, man, the, the wines you're going to be getting into today. So I know the one on our left you recognize pretty well. Yeah, Smith Devereaux, man. These yeah. are my guys right here. Yep, that's uh, the uh, 2019 Smith Devereaux Ibex Single Vineyard Merlot. And the reason why you know that so well is because Ian Devereaux is yeah. the winemaker. That's your good friend, and he's now yeah. your winemaker at Zeta. Yeah, Zeta, right, yeah. What is it, yeah, what's it been like working with him, creating Zeta, creating the vision and, and, the, and the wine and everything? You know, it was a, it was really unique. Uh, it, you know, our relationship started uh, from another business partner I have on a, a, another project, and he just kind of thought that Ian was a person I would just kind of vibe with. And I happened to be in Napa for another event, went by the vineyard, mm -hmm. and we sat one day and we just started talking. It was nothing. Of course, you know, you're sharing wine. It's just hit it off. And then, you know, and he had, but he had the writer's background, you know, because he wrote a lot mm -hmm. and did articles. But his experience, he's a musician, yep. Yep. Uh, you know, so and he likes boxing. So he's yeah. just kind of like this all around person, right? So, uh, but his experience about like what he wanted, you know, what, it, what the wine does and why he's like, into the earth of it uh just really was something that i was like okay when i wanted when i thought about doing a tribute for my mom who had who had passed and i was just wanted to do something that was special uh this this idea just manifested itself and it took some time it was something i didn't want to do immediately you know immediately uh but you know he let me go through the process and then you know tasting and and you know yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. I want this. I don't. I want that. So you he chose the blend. Yeah, exactly. So great. he he was uh, he was really great at that, and so that's what I really like. And so we were able to come and make something I felt was really special. And when when we landed on what it was, it it all just felt so wonderful. Sure. And it's been doing great. Well, yeah, yeah, really, really, really proud of the product. Man. Yeah, so. I, I I can't wait to taste it. And and then uh, the the star of the show is over there on the end, man. Yeah. That's the 2019 Rosetta yeah. Napa Valley Red Blend. Um, I've had that before. I can't yeah. wait to try it again, man. You ready to do this wine tasting? Yeah, let's go, let's man. Let's hop into it. Let's All rock. Right, good. All right, y'all, this is the Smell Sip Swag, the second where I walk you guys through an official wine tasting, which in the wine world is Sea Swirl Smell Sip Saver. Here on our show, Sea Swirl Smell Sip Swag. So we're going to kick back, interpret this the best way we know how, have some fun with it, and drink some Sada. Let's go, man. Um, so, yeah, I'm swag. Exactly. I'm surfing. Exactly. Okay. I'm swagging. I'm surfing. I'm swagging. I'm too late, man. So full disclosure for everybody, I've had this wine before um, and, and said, I don't know if you know this, but there's sometimes among some segments of the wine industry, not all, that some celebrity backed products and wines just lack quality. I'm here to tell everybody that this is not one of those wines. You remember when I tried this for the first time a few months ago, Yeah, I was doing my little nerdy thing and whatever, and you was looking, you was like, my man is like really in that. And I was like, cause this is fucking delicious. That's yeah. why. Not knowing exactly who you were at the time too, that was even yeah, yeah, more yeah. unique is that the, the fact that you were, you know, cause a lot of people have learned to fake be, being a psalm or you know being great at wine tasting so so but you know but i thought that was really interesting that i could tell that you you did have knowledge yeah. you know and so uh you know it's important you know and of course uh you know you know people have expectation that as a celebrity you're just going to kind of throw your name on something yeah, yeah, and expect yeah. it to go and you know and, and after the success of like George Clooney them with the with the tequila. Everybody expects it's just mad riches and, mm -hmm. and you know in mm -hmm. spirits and and so you just like oh let me just find one to throw my name on and then I'm about to yeah. go. Yeah. But you know for me, uh, one this was you know kind of a, a dedication to my mom for sure, yeah. and therefore the spirit behind it and why I wanted to uh, do this wine. Uh, you know it took a lot of love and a lot of care, and so uh, sure. and, you, and uh, hopefully you can taste. Oh it. man, I, I definitely did, and so yeah. Man. Man, we'll, and I know you've tasted this a hundred times, yeah. but we'll be able to taste it for you guys. Like I said, I've had it before. It was great. It's going to be great today, but we get to go through it for you guys. And let's rock it, man. All right, cool. So the first uh, thing, two S's about wine tasting are C and swirl. So we're going to look at this and kind of give it a little swirl. Yeah. Get my rhythm. Um, yeah, when I look at, rhythm, yeah, when I get a look at a glass of wine, I'm looking for a couple things. So I'm looking at the legs to see how the alcohol interacts with the glass, which can give me an indication of where the grape is grown. Uh, this, I know this is 14.9% 
percent alcohol. That's a lot of alcohol. So this is nice. Yeah, this is this is Napa. This is uh, warm climate. So so you got that. And then I'm also looking at the color just to see uh, if it, it'll give me an indication of the age. Yeah. Um, and so that's perfect. This is a very still deeply colored, vibrant wine. I can tell it's probably pretty young. This is a yeah. 2019. So yeah. yeah, this red wine gets older and gets a little bit lighter. So. Um, yeah, that's what I do when I see. So the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, well, I'm gonna give it a, a quick, a quick little uh uh, and then we're gonna give it a good uh, smell. And so when you smell this, like I said, you've had this hundreds of times. But when you smell it, looking for some caramel, looking for some spice, yes. and also looking for some cedar. Let's see what we get here. Get that cedar right off the right jump. Off the top, yeah, the cedar is right there. That's that oak that you guys aged in. I think it was 23 months new oak, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh uh, yeah, and the spice. And the caramel was something that, again, it was, was something that I thought was going to be very important to the, the, the taste because it reminded me of my childhood. That was one of my favorite candies was those little soft caramel candies mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. get and that to unroll. Mm -hmm. And I, you, I was still in the end. I wanted that. Yeah. I wanted that go. undertone right there. And he's straight. Just yeah. caramel. You want yeah. caramel? Caramel. Here you go. Um, and then the last uh, two most important things about wine tasting, man, is sipping swag. So I want to know if you can taste a couple things. So I'm looking for uh, some cherries, looking for some chocolate, and looking for some vanilla. So okay. we, we toast our glass. With a touch with of a glass. Touch of glass. Yes, Cheers, sir. my brother. Let's do it. Mm. Well, the cherries pop right away, you know. Immediately. Yeah, the cherries pop right away. Um. This is, oh, I can't wait for, for the crew to taste this because this is, I always look for wines that are perfectly like imbalanced, that harmony of that fruit, yeah. that tannin, that acidity, that alcohol. And when I tasted this a few months ago, it's the same feeling I'm having now. It just has that perfect balance. 15% alcohol, but yeah. it's not too much. Yeah, it's not too, it's not too aggressive. That's one of the things too that I, you know, I, I love to, you know, know that you are having a, a glass of wine. Right. Like you want to know that exactly. you're having a glass of wine and at the same time um, be able to finish it, you know, mm -hmm. so be able to have a couple of glasses and drink. And and so, you know, it it, it, it kind of I like <clears throat> this is the thing that it hits the front of your 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 palate, the mm -hmm. front taste. And then it, as it's going away mm -hmm. or I the finish, the the finish, finish. Mm -hmm. it it gives you all kinds of different yeah other things I nuances love now yeah. I, i'm getting that vanilla like coming in coming in for real right now um cherries vanilla yeah. i'm the maybe the chocolate is going to come as like a tertiary flavor coming a little bit later i'm yeah. probably not at of course when you, as soon as you say it right there it is right there though it's right there so it's honestly like, i'm getting everything <laughs> so good i'm gonna have to get some more of this for sure once again my brother thank cheers. you so much man. of course man cheers, cheers. man so i want to ask you um always like to bring people on the show and just throw something at them. Something I didn't tell them that, that, that okay. and you just boom, just throw it at them. So here you go. <laughs> um, so I met you a few months ago. Um, this was at the uh, dinner. It was a dinner for a uh, set of um, 1010 wine bar, Inglewood, yeah. great place. Shout out Inglewood. Mm -hmm. And um, before you got there, I was able to talk to your family, talk to your sister and your brother-in-law, amazing people honestly that you have in your family we talked about just growing up and everything but uh when you arrived um and there was the room wasn't big but it was packed it's like 100 people in the room full, full of people who had all come to uh, meet you and taste your wine and talk about your wine and from the time that you walked in the door to the time that you got to the table which again is not very far it took you about 30 minutes to get to the table because you stopped and you talked to every single person in the room you thanked every single person in the room. You was taking selfies with everybody in the room. And my first time meeting you, that spoke volumes for me, man. I was just like, this is this is incredible. You've been in the, the entertainment industry for so long, but what is it like now being a wine owner and getting to go to these wine dinners and the reception and everything? You know, it's actually, it was actually very uh, surprising to find out how big this world was sure. because you get into the wine with a degree of kind of self um, you know, satisfaction, you know, the, you know, the attitude of like, I'm kind of bringing my celebrity to it. Yeah. And, 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 and then, you know, you kind of realize like this world has really grown. It is a lot of people interested in wine, a lot of great collectors, a lot of people who are doing shows like yourself, uh, and then, and then inside our culture. So this is just the big, this is just the general, but then you get inside African-American, 
uh, it's very specific. Very, very, a lot of cool groups of people doing things like like 1010, you yeah, know, they're, sure. they, uh, those young ladies, they have a really cool wine bar and, and, you know, wine experiences that they offer people. And so that's what I really enjoyed the most is the, the, the experience of kind of coming into a new world and being surprised uh, by the existence of this subculture in the culture. Sure. And it allows me to grow, find even new material as far as comedian, because you, you <laughs> find like people who can't, like you said, you find people that's it's like- so much funny shit that happens. Oh my all, God. Like, all yeah, type of crazy, weird stuff in the taste yeah, Everybody swear to God, they like, yo, they like, yo, <laughs> what's that? It's just like notes of, uh, I'm tasting like summer school mixed with, <laughs> He like summer school, bro. What, what happened to you? This tastes like punishment mixed with. But you do. But I do love the idea, like also kind of being a renaissance in my in my sense of style and the way that I even present. You know, like it is that environment. People like to dress up and they'll put on a nice you know outfit when they kind of do it. And it's not a requirement, but uh, you know when you go kind of go to wine events, it fits my aesthetic. So for sure. Uh, again, I like I like the. You know, I like what it brings about in people, and, and you know, and, and to be honest, uh, you know, it is a lot of cool. Of course, there's a lot of celebrity friends yep. doing the wine game. Yep. Dwayne Wade yep. and uh, Post Malone, yep. who I know these guys yep. are all in the wine space, and it's cool. We get to hang and yeah. you know, and taste each other's stuff and have a good time and talk. Yeah, man. Uh, so I've been, I've actually been, uh, you know, um, really, really pleasantly surprised of what I've learned and what has been offered by. Uh, being a part of it, so it was that's great. awesome, man. Wine and culture—it's a—it's a, it's a yeah, whole no thing we got out here. As I swirl my my seta. yeah. See, I like the, the squirrel game you get, like, when you have to get it in your hand right here. It, it takes See, a minute. It takes a minute to be able to do it off the table. You got you to gotta commit See, to it. Yeah, because a lot you of just, people, If you just, like, eh, playing with it, I see people playing with it a lot. You got you to gotta get into it. Once you get into it, you get that good one in. Get that good one in. The See, key is never having too much in your glass that you'll spill. spill. And once you get that good one in there, if you got too much, like, like I go to a restaurant sometimes, that if the pour is too heavy, I can't swirl. My table squirrel game pretty lit. Table like, swirl. when, I was, when I'm on the table, I can pretty, you know, wow. Look at that. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a good hula hoop. Yeah, that's gangster. That's gangster. Like, you like, my man called. <laughs> but then, you know, get it in the hand. Different I'm just, story. I'm take it easy. <laughs> I'm going to chill I'm out on that. Hit him with, 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 with the sip. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you, um, we have a common bond. We both were raised in St. Louis. Uh, yes, shout out yeah. 314 Northside. Yes, sir. So, so you have a unique perspective on some of the factors, some of the challenges there are uh, growing up in the inner city, growing up in the hood, growing yeah. up in a place like that, yet you've been able to achieve so much over uh, such a long time. Um, if you have any advice, what's your advice for dreamers, for people coming up that have a dream, that have a goal, something that they want to achieve, coming from a place like we came from, uh, coming straight out of Big Onk's mouth, what, what yeah. would be your advice for, for their path of success? Well, you know, the, the, spirit of be, the spirit of who you are as a person is one that you have to emote first. I always tell people that. It's all about what you believe inside because where you where you are, doesn't have to limit you. You know, a lot of people feel like you have to be somewhere in order to make it. And this is not necessarily true because <clears throat> You, you you allow you allow your light to turn up and if, and if your light starts to really turn up inside you it'll lead you, you yeah. it'll it'll start to pull you uh you know where you it'll pull you beyond you know uh where you're supposed to be because right. you know i started out you know again not knowing i was going to be a comedian i mean the the whole name came because i was i started out thinking i was going to be a singer and you know, so I used to sing? sing. I used to sing all the time, right? Like I used to sing in groups and all that. And yeah. comedy was this thing I did, like just on the side. So, yeah. but as I started to like really like enjoy making people laugh, mm -hmm. it's what led me, you yeah. know. And I had, you know, again, I went to college. I had, I worked in corporate America. I had a degree, so I had all these paths that I could have, you know, could have gone on. Yet. My, my, I felt like my light took me to where I was supposed to be. And I recommend that to people. If you believe in something, you, you're an artist, you're a camera person, you're a, you're a director, you, you do clothes, 
believe in it. Believe in it so much that it'll just pull you. Yeah. Because, you know, this idea that, you, that you're that you limited by your circumstances, you start to believe that and that'll push you down. Yeah. You can't really let those things control it. You can, you know, as living proof, you Mo, proof. me, you, yeah. are, are people that can, you know, you can take it and you don't have to say take it to go where you don't have to ever come back you know both me sure. and nelly myself uh you know we go back all the time you know yeah. and you hold it down for the city uh you know jason tatum and all yeah. the you know and yeah. ezekiel and all these guys yeah. like you know that we all so st louis still very much <laughs> still, you know so uh it's, it's a it's a 100 kind of situation but yeah. i definitely encourage people to believe in themselves believe in that power and then know that you can you can start where you are you can kind of start your dream where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, people go like, I want to be an actor. Start acting. Yeah. Act, get in the plays. Find something to do right there. If you don't have the ability to come to L.A. right away, what can you do right there? What can? What is an opportunity for you? They got the black rep. They got, they got theater situations going on in St. Louis. Yeah. You know, try to go audition. Be a part of it. Do commercials. Be a part of the, yeah. the local environment that's saying, hey, this is what we do. That's incredible advice, to say the least, man. Thank you, man. Um, this has been an honor, man. It's almost time for last call. You ready to cheers up and, and turn up? No doubt. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it, man. Congratulations. Right. Cheers, bro. Cheers, man. See, he got better. He got better. I told better right you. There, That's awesome. Let's do it, brother. Welcome to Last Call. All right, my man, you know the drill. Ah. Bar is closed, it's almost time for us to get, get the, the fuck, fuck out. out. However, you can take home this incredible bottle of wine. It's 2018 Opus One if you can answer one sommelier level wine question correctly. Come on, man. You ready to just hit it? You Come on, man. Just, Come just... with it, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. do it. <clears throat> All right. California produces the most wine in the U.S. According to the publication, The Drinks Business, in 2021, what state is number two? Florida, Washington, Nevada, New York. Wow. That's actually surprising, because I would have thought Oregon, so they're not even in there. That's a, that's a good point. Yikes. Florida. No, damn! It's it's Washington. Washington. So it's, it's up there. Washington. Washington don't get no props, man. No props, and they, they produce no so props. much wine. They produce so I much know wine. That. Like Oregon was what I would have said, and they right there by each other. They they kind of flip flop. Actually, Oregon was up there uh, one of those years, and then kind of Washington kind of came up, and they came and I they never snuck heard in there. Anybody talk about a Washington wine? Oh man, I got it's you. Crazy. I got you. I got you. All Trust right. me. I should have won <laughs> just on. Um, just because. Yeah, just because I was thinking because I said the area. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Regardless, man, wine is about sharing. It's about sharing with friends. 2018 opens one. Now, when you decide to open, I'm just yeah, saying your I'm boy is boy. always I'm thirsty. Boy, I'm yeah. always thirsty. I appreciate Thank you, man. Congrats, man. Salute. This has been Wine and Culture LA. Thank you to our friends at WineConsigners.com and our friends at the Cellar yeah. Beverly Hills. Said, this has been a special day for me. I'm honored. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I appreciate you being here, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank of you course. for having me, of man. Of course, man. All right, good. Y'all stay thirsty, all right? All right. We out. Hey, can I can I have a, a an emotional moment? I love you guys. Yeah. Ser seriously. I love you guys. That's all. Don't make this about me. It's not about me. I love you guys. It's about love. <laughs> and today... I'm gonna pick it up from right where we were. Okay. I have a quarter in my pocket. Boom. This will be a good day. Oh, Come on. This will be a good day. Come on, baby. You gotta do some laundry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can park. You can park for another two minutes. <laughs> you are so on point. You're just like a Virgo. But you're an Aries. I'm gonna just one take. I'm gonna just see what happens. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right. Hey, you, 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 you're that, you're that guy. I do this, man. You're that guy. You're that guy. Son, son, I do this, B. <laughs> I got you. Okay.